If you're like me, you may not have had a great Java teacher. And Java scanners especially aren't one of those things that are usually taught very well. So today I have a Java scanner tutorial for you and if you commit to watching all the way through, I assure you will you'll walk away a better Java programmer. Hey, it's Alex back again. Uh, hope you're having a great day. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial just like this every single week for you. So if you're new here, that's something you're interested in, then consider subscribing to the channel. We'll just start off this Java scanner tutorial by making a new Java project and calling it like scanner tutorial, hit finish, expand that up, right click on source, go to new class, and we'll call it like scanner touch, okay? Hit this first check mark and then hit finish. Now we're all ready to start learning about Java scanners. When you log into Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you're prompted for a username and a password before you can get in. And when you click on the username box, like your keyboard comes up and you type in your username. That's called user input. When a program asks you to enter something and you enter it, that's input. To get input in Java, you can use a scanner. And that's a big reason what scanners are used for, is to get input from a user or to get lines from a file. But today we'll focus on getting user input from a scanner. So to create this beloved scanner that I talked so highly about, just type the word scanner with a capital S and then name it something. It can be anything. When I was taught, um, he likes to call it fetch because it's like a dog going and fetching something, like input but I personally like to call it scan. And then do an equal sign, the keyword new, and then a scanner again with parentheses and a semicolon. Way to interact with Java and Eclipse is through this window, the console window, we'll be typing into here, and that's just called system.in. Hover over scanner since there's some red underlines here, and then click import scanner, java.util. That will bring the scanner code into our program so that we can use it. And you notice it added this line here, import, which is purple, it's a keyword, and then java.util.scanner. This is the set of code that contains the scanner code. And by calling import and then this reference to it, lets us use it. So if you don't have this import statement, then it won't work, your scanner won't work. So you have to have that import statement. And that goes for most things that have this format. Anything that has this format, this, this equals new, the same thing, is called declaring an object. And an object is just like literally any object. Like I have my Nintendo Switch here. This is an object, like a physical object. This mouse is a physical object. This scanner is a physical object, but in the computer. Like on the mouse, you can click, you can right click and left click and scroll. With the scanner, you can get an integer from a user, you can get a word from a user, you can get a line from a user. And so we're gonna practice using those functions. And right now we're gonna make a senior quote program. We're gonna ask a user for their name, their age, and then the quote that they want in the yearbook. So we'll first start off by asking the user um, for, their age, for their name. So like say, what's your first name? Now, without a scanner, this would be really hard for a user to interact with this program. Like, what would we do when we saved and run this? Nothing, like we can't, we can't enter anything. It has no interface between me and the program. A scanner fixes that problem. We can say, to get the name of a person, we can do the name of our scanner and then a dot to bring up what that scanner can do. And it can do all these things. So just like the mouse can left click, right click and scroll. This one can do things like close, delimit, equals, find in line, all these. And one of them is called next with parentheses. So this code will get the next word that they enter. So we'll save it and run it. We see what's your first name again, but now we can enter and I can say my name, Alex. Hit return, and that's it. Noth nothing really happens. But we can, what we can do is we can store what the person entered, this Alex in the previous example, we can store that into, say, a string. Say string name equals scan.next. Now the name variable will contain what the user entered. So we have a direct link from the input I put in to the program. 
And that's how websites and apps get data from people back and forth. You enter in your keyboard, it's stored in the program. You enter in your keyboard, you store in the program, you click a certain button, it sends that information to the program. So now to make sure everything's working, we'll just print out name, the name variable, which should contain what we type in. We'll save it and run it. What's your first name? I'll say like um, Billy, enter, and then we have the Billy name returned. So now we know it's stored. We're not limited to just strings. We can also get integers. So we can ask the user for their age now. So we'll print out, what's your age? Just like we did before. And we'll do scan dot to bring up what the scanner's functions are. And it looks like there's one called next int. Just like that. Save it and run it. You get the first name is like Susan. Hit enter. What's your age now? So I can say like, um, I'm 17, hit enter, and it works. But we're actually not storing that integer. So that's one thing I forgot to do. So I'll just say int age equals whatever the user entered for that age. So it's pretty cool. Um, we can get different data types from a user too. Not just exactly what they enter, but the type that they enter. So age is a number, we can treat it as an integer and name is a string, we can treat it as a string. Now the last thing we'll do here is ask them for their senior quote. So just like before, we'll print a message asking them, what's your senior quote? Like that. We'll try the same thing we did up here. String quote equals scan.next. And then at the very end, we'll print out everything. We'll say like, thank you, and then tack on their name, which is this name variable here. To put a name inside of a print statement with double quotes, you do a plus sign, and then the variable. And then we're just gonna continue by tacking on another string. Thank you, whatever your name is. You are, then their age, you are blank years old. Here, I'll, I'll um, make this a little bigger so you can see everything. So a new print statement since it's kind of long on one line. And your senior quote, then tack on that quote. Okay, we'll save it and run it. We'll see what happens. Say my first name is Alex again. I currently am 22 years old. And my senior quote is the sky is falling. It's like that, we hit enter, and it looks like it's almost ready. We see, thank you, Alex, the input from the name. You are 22, the age we entered, years old, and your senior quote is the. And that looks like it's only the first word. Well, why is it only getting the first word? It's because this scan.next gets the next word until a space character. But we want to get, in this case, the whole line, since a quote can be multiple words. So to do that, we can just keep this, say the quote starts at the first word, and then tack on the rest of the line using another one of the scanner's functions. So we'll just say that the quote is actually the quote, which is the first word, plus scan.next line like this and next line will get the rest of the words until you hit enter and to make this a little cleaner this is actually the same thing as just doing plus equals plus equals plus equals means the same thing plus this we'll save it and run it and see if everything is working properly and don't worry if you don't understand everything right now. I'll go over everything line by line to make sure you understand it right after this. So we'll say my name is um, Ace. That's my dog's name. I'll say Ace wants a senior, senior quote. Um, he is three years old. Ace is three. What's your senior quote? Um, give me more treat, please. Okay, hit enter. And awesome, we see, thank you, Ace. 
you're three years old and your senior quote is give me more treats please i don't know about you but that, i think that's a pretty cool java scanner program right there the very first thing we do is click this green run button and that runs anything inside of this main method here the first line in the main method is creating a scanner scanner the name of the scanner equals new scanner System.in is just that console window that we're going to be typing into. We had to hover over it and import it, which created this import java.util.scanner, which just brings that scanner code into our program. Next, for our senior quote program, we prompted the user for their first name. We got the input from them by doing scan.next, which gets the first word and stores that into a name variable. So once they enter their name and hit enter, then it's stored inside of name. Next, we ask them for their age. We do the exact same thing. They type in an age and we store it into the age variable. And lastly, we ask them for their senior quote. We get the first word of the quote and then we get the rest of that line and add it to the quote. So the whole quote is there and stored inside the variable quote. Next, we say thank you and then we tack on their name by using plus signs. Um, with the variable and the double quotes. We restate their age, and then we print out their senior quote and say your senior quote is then their quote. So I'll just run it one more time um, to make sure it works again as expected. What's your first name? Say Freddy, he is like 18, and senior quote is, is this the real life or is this just fantasy haha <laughs> and it works as expected i hope me showing you this has helped you learn more about java scanners and if you liked this java scanner tutorial it would help me out a lot if you clicked that like button and if you like my style of videos you can hit the subscribe button to get a new java video from me every single week i appreciate you being here with me learning java because i know that you could be anywhere in the world um, so i'm very appreciative that you're here with me so i'll catch you in the next video